I promised a program today about one of the most common slash famous slash look forward to birds of spring in our backyards. And that is the tiny, tiny little house wren. I said the, the tiny bird with the huge voice. And that is definitely the case with this bird. Um, they are resident birds of our area that migrate south. And the first thing I thought we should do in this in, in the program today, of course, is separate out the it from the other backyard wren that we have that stays here all winter. And it does confuse people sometimes because they're so used to their uh, house wrens or Jenny wrens leaving for the winter. When they see the Carolina wren in the winter months, they go, wait a minute, wait a minute, that wren's supposed to be gone. But let's, let, let's look at the two different birds right now before we get started, and then we'll get more into the house wren. Okay, the house wren is pretty much an all kind of chocolate brown bird with not a lot of real distinctive markings. It has a little banded tail and the, the breast is lighter than the than the uh, the back is, but not nearly as marked as ooh, his cousin, the Carolina wren. This is a bird we see here all winter and, and, and also nests in our area. A bit larger than the, the little tiny house wren, the Carolina wren, is, it can be chunky, and this picture is a little exaggerated because he's very cold and he's fluffed out. But that creamy belly, um, the the eye stripe, and the, it, more of a, I don't know, a chestnut or rusty color back? Cinnamon, as Ruth says, uh, the color on the back. So uh, more colorful, but they do both that characteristic trait of wrens. They do like to cock their tail up in the air like that. So that is... Uh, that's something that binds the two together. So those house friends, which have been gone pretty much all winter, uh, they go to the southern United States and to Mexico and maybe even points even further south than that. But they start returning. Well, they're on their way now. I had someone say it, it, it email me that they had them. They saw one in their yard. This that's early, but they usually it's mid April to late April before they come in. So. These birds are starting to return, and they have a very, very interesting lifestyle. For one thing, they, they're tiny, but they're very aggressive, <laughs> they, especially in their nesting territories. So you have to be very cautious about you know, when you put your nest boxes up, uh, placement and, and things like that. They are, I always say they're a retail owner's uh, dream bird because... When I say that that one house wren box is good, I can honestly say five or better. And that, you know, that's a nice sales pitch, but it's true. Here's the mating system. The males come in now or in the next couple of weeks and they start scouting out the nesting areas. And they like an area that has multiple nesting opportunities. They want to prove what a good provider they are to the female. So what they'll do is they'll find what they can, as many nesting sites as they can, whether that's an old woodpecker cavity in a limb, maybe a knot hole in a tree, or your birdhouses, right? one or two or three even birdhouses around the area. And he will stuff all of those with sticks, little tiny sticks. He'll break them apart. You can see this guy here trying to fit a stick that's way too long into the, the box. But you know, he, he, he'll eventually figure it out. But they love to they'll stuff all those houses full of sticks. And then he starts singing, belting out that song. I hope you can hear that. Very chattery. Very rambly and very loud. Uh, you know, with the microphone situation here, not sure how that well that's going over there. But you, that's what you start listening for. And what he's doing, he'll go around and he all the, all the edge of his territory, and he'll sing that song out. And he's trying to one attract a female, obviously, but the other is to ward off any of the other male house friends saying, "This is my territory. Don't come near." Well, when she arrives, which is usually a couple of weeks after uh, he gets here, he'll take her around to 
each of those boxes that he has stuffed full of sticks and say, look, honey, here's a place for you. Don't you want to nest here? Won't you want to nest here? And the next one. I've actually uh, heard stories of them, the, the female landing in, 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 in sticking her head in the box and he flying off the top of the box and hitting her from behind and pushing her into the box. That's a little aggressive when it comes to you showing off the new apartment you've got just gotten. But they, the female will decide where they nest. Now, He's not going to let anybody else nest in, in any of those boxes. But he will use, he, she'll nest in one. He'll use one or two or three as bachelor pads to roost in at night. And the other, you know, they nest twice a season and they will probably nest in the second site, a sec different site later on in the summer, not the first site. It's good survival instincts to move around so that you're not in the same a location for too long so that is what they while well, there's multiple boxes now remember i said they were very aggressive when it comes to their nesting territory i wasn't exaggerating nesting territory they, they these birds don't want any bird nesting near their, their their houses and i've heard there have been many stories of them uh i like a at martha lafitte they had a, a eastern phoebe that tried to nest build a nest uh, near their one of their wren houses and that wren kept ripping that uh, phoebe's nest apart as she was trying to build it i've had stories of them coming back to their favorite house in the same yard uh year after year and they, the one year they got back and a robin had built a nest on the ledge above their house and it drove the wrens crazy they just harassed and harassed and harassed that poor robin who was already on the nest uh, and of course there are stories of them going into bluebird houses and breaking eggs and they'll go into downy woodpecker's nest and break eggs they're very aggressive so even the north american bluebird society has a statement out against placement of wren houses close to your bluebird houses because they are such a problem that way so um, the good thing is territory tends to separate those out a little bit. The you know, bluebird houses should be out in the open. They like the open areas, whereas the, the, the house friends prefer the wooded area. So keep the, if you've got both nests, keep them separated because the little house friends are, are really aggressive when it comes to that. So now what makes a good wren house? All right. Let me grab this one of these. A wren house has a very small opening, a house rent house, one inch to one and maybe up to an eighth, one in the sixteenth, but a very small. I've always heard you put a quarter, about the size of trace a quarter out and drill that, that hole into the box. They should be able to be cleaned out, uh, maybe not quite as vital as the bluebird boxes when because they nest so many times a season, and they also use grass where wrens use sticks, and sticks don't absorb the water like grass does, and which is really good for the, the bugs to breed in. But you will want to clean them out at the end of the season. The good thing about it, one good thing about wrens is they don't mind a free swinging house or a post-mounted house. So you can mount them or you can have them free swinging. Uh, the Carolina wren, if you want to provide nesting for them, they require a much larger hole, one and a half inch diameter. This is a bluebird box, and Carolina wrens will use bluebird boxes as well. So they're they're a bit bigger. Their their hole requirements are larger, but they they are absolutely rewarding. These birds are bug eating machines, folks. The um, the, the study I I always quote. I read about years ago where uh, they were recording, they were following a pair of house friends and they wanted to officially document how many insects they ate a day. This one nest box that had five wren eggs in it, house wren eggs that hatched, they recorded every uh, time the, the, the male and female left the nest and came back with at least one bug, sometimes two bugs, sometimes three bugs. They made 500 trips a day with insects back to their babies. Now that's just one nesting pair of a tiny little bird this big. You think about all the birds that are nesting all around your house and in your yard and how many insects they're eating and how many insects it requires to raise uh, hungry mouths to their fledging. So they are in incredibly important uh, 
importance of our uh, important part of our environment and they, they they should be encouraged in your yard and that that's a wonderful thing so what you should be listening for we're going to do the house wren one more time we're going to play that song and then we'll uh, play the carolina wren for comparison so that you can hear the difference in the songs the carolina wrens stayed all winter and they're already singing they've been they've probably already got eggs right now uh they've already started their nesting process where the wrens are just on their way so House friend? All right, and now the Carolina Wren, which I always say to me sounds like it says cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. You should be hearing that right now. They are very vocal and they sing most months out of the year. So the wrens, great birds, great idea for a program. You can get them to nest in your yard. Nesting season's on the way. Thought this would be a good program. Thanks so much for the idea. Give the programs a like if you like them. Share them, please. Uh, visit us on YouTube uh, and subscribe to the channel there. And until then, we'll come by, come by and let's talk birds.